am I just living my life as I see fit and then asking Jesus to bless it? It's like, Jesus, I really need your help with this. I don't really care about you, but could you like really help me out with this? Or am I spending time with him so I can know him, so he can teach me and empower me to do what he's calling me to do? See the difference? The difference of the mob versus the intimate group of 12? Am I pursuing Jesus for my own selfish end? Or am I pursuing Jesus because he is my life? He is my master. He is my God. And I want to know him and be known by him. We have to ask ourselves that question. Which group are we? Just needing something from Jesus? Or is he our life? And we're walking with him. So the last two verses here. You have... um, if you look at the other Gospels, you'll see some other things happen first. First, you have, after he calls the Twelve, another group is formed at this point. Um, and um, they're wanting to hear some of what he has to say. So they're a little bit different than the other group. And they're also looking for miracles. And he heals several of them. And then he goes back up in the mountain and teaches the Beatitudes and the, and the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and then they come down and go into one of the cities. And at some point, he takes those Twelve men and goes to, to one of their houses to have a meal with them. And this is when, once again, they are berated by a large group of people. Um, he's like, all right, you're my 12. You're going to be my constant companions. I'm going to pour into you, minister to you. They sit down for a meal, which it, meals are a great way to come together and have community together. And he's sitting down there, and next thing you know, there's people like pouring in through the windows and the door. It's like, oh, okay, maybe not today. Um, <laughs> this isn't quite going as planned. But once again, the question is for you and I. In this scenario, who would you rather be? Do you want to be at the table with Jesus, personally learning from him and practicing living his ways with him right alongside of you? Or do you want to be on the outside, banging on the door, needing something from God, but not actually wanting him? No, make no mistake. We should make our requests known to God. He wants to know our needs and our wants and our desires. But there's a big difference between doing life with Jesus and just thinking of Jesus as an add-on. Big difference. Because Jesus is a person to know and to follow, not an abstract power to receive blessings from. See, many were interested in a temporary miracle but had no interest in his message. Many were interested in overthrowing the Romans, but had no interest in the type of king that Jesus is or the type of kingdom that he preached. Many heard his message of the kingdom, but they were spiritually blind and unable to see and understand. And many wanted what Jesus could do for for them, but did not want Jesus. So once again, I'm going to bring it to us. I think this is true for many people today. For many people who claim to be Christians. You see, because for many, Jesus is just a one-way ticket to heaven, a religious thing to do on the weekend, a person to pray to only when you're really desperate, or an add-on feature to whatever we've already have planned to do with our life. Missing The realization that Jesus is life. And Jesus is a person to know and to follow, not just some abstract power to receive blessings from. So may that not be true of us. But if it already is, may we repent and start being with Jesus and following Jesus.